those lows, as Michael pointed out? I guess technically we are in a, an uptrend and what we need is a break of the 4,075 point mark to break that. But the uptrend isn't very convincing and overshadowed by those macro themes. And I think two key things that the market is worried about, one is potential systemic risk coming through from the Eurozone as well as the banking sector. And we saw signs of that over in the US as well when we did see the Federal Housing fin Financial Agency uh, go out to sue uh, 17 uh, global banks and that was a negative for the financial sector. In, in fact, Bank of America, one of the worst performers on the U.S. session, down by 8.3 percent after the U.S. regulator asked it what it can do if uh, conditions worsen for the bank. So I guess one thing on the radar of investors is possible systemic risks stemming out of the Eurozone and the banking sector. And the other is slowdown in the U.S., which we've been watching. If we have a look at the U.S. job numbers, we knew that that would dictate uh, the the sentiment going into this week and we certainly saw that zero jobs growth. We saw the July numbers also being revised down, the US market having a heavy sell-off and Asian markets down across the board. Our market also saw some stronger than expected falls I think because of the number of stocks trading ex-dividend. We saw Seven West Media trade ex-dividend, its stock losing more than 10 percent. We also saw BHP Billiton trading ex-dividend, that lost 3.4 percent. So the raft of companies trading ex also weighing down on the market. But altogether, I guess the market's really focused on Europe tonight because the US does have a holiday. And in terms of Europe, we have seen uh, the credit default swaps once again blowing out. So that's going to be watched very closely tonight. This we saw today, and there's certainly a, a lot of them. What about any areas of strength or any stocks that outperformed? Well, there weren't too many areas of strength in the top 100. We only saw four stocks gaining there. But as you can imagine, when we do see increased volatility, it is those safe haven areas which do come sharply into focus and nothing more than a gold. If we have a look at the gold ETF, one of the best performers of the day, up by 4%, we saw Newcrest Mining also gaining ground. MacArthur Coal was help, help, uh, supported by that uh, Peabody Asla Mittal bid being extended out to the 27th of September. So in the end, we saw a flat result there and then we saw QR National the Wiggins Island uh, announcement this is a major catalyst for the shares originally we had quite a positive reaction in terms of the shares but by the end of the session once again the general market mood just dragging on that stock so not a huge increase in terms of share price so mostly bearish today but there were some bright spots on the market I guess we're going to take our lead from uh, Europe tonight and in terms of uh, domestic data things weren't too bad we did see our company profits in the last quarter rising a lot better than expected, although ANZ job ads, which tends to be a forward indicator, showing the second consecutive month of declines. Mike, there's a, a feeling out there that investment landscape looking for some sort of catalyst, that they're waiting for something? Well, September's going to be a big month in terms of decisions and speeches. And I guess in terms of the events that we're seeing, they could either be a positive for, or a negative for the markets. The problem with the type of events that we're going to see in September is that they're seen as a binary income, a yes outcome, a yes or a no answer. There's no sort of in-between road. If we have a look at Obama's job speech, what's well, going to be a positive or a negative? If we have a look at Bernanke's speech, which is due out on the 22nd of September, on Thursday, well, he's going to allude to QE3 or he isn't. We have a look at the uh, German Parliament decision on the 23rd for the European Financial Stability Fund or well, they're going to okay it or they're not. So in terms of the consequences of what comes out of these big events they are binary outcomes and that's really the problem here. They can have a massive positive impact for the market or a massive negative impact for the market and that's where it really becomes hard for traders and investors unless they're trading sort of combo trades on derivatives and or trading just volatility. So it is likely that we are going to see high volatility in September because of the nature of the events and really driving those events are of course the problems that we're seeing in the Eurozone in terms of sovereign debt and a lot of comments coming out over the weekend regarding that. The Wall Street Journal had an article quoting an IMF senior economist who thinks that Greece is going to have to default by March at the latest if not by the end of the year and it could be as early as a review and then in the US having a look at that job situation and the US economy, Obama's speech, Bernanke's speech, these are all going to be watched very closely. Closely.